Morning, morning, everyone. How are you? It's good to see everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us. It is Tuesday, October 3rd. How is it October already? I have no idea. Um, it's wonderful to be here with you guys. This is episode 276, and I am uh, coming to you from just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. I hope that you have had a wonderful weekend. I hope that you had a wonderful September. I have no idea where the fall is going. <laughs> I feel like here we have crossed the threshold of really being into fall now. The trees are red. They're turning. We've had blustery kind of weather, lots of rain, lots of drizzle. It's been cold. Um, yeah, we're just kind of making that very fast transition into cold, rainy, and wet. But we are here. We are surrounded by warm wool, and that really is the key. <laughs> That's what's important. Um, before I get asked um, questions, because I will forget and I don't want to forget, this is my Embers sweater. It's a top-down yoke. We'll just get rid of the other camera here so you can see it. It's a top-down yoke. These are my hand-spun singles. This was a Massim um, that I had from Edgewood Garden Studios from years ago, and this is a uh, singles yarn that I bought um, from my friend Brittany of Crux Fibers the and I adjusted the yoke to fit me and it's actually after I washed and finished it the unspun wool that I used for the main color really shrunk up a lot so even though on my swatch it had shrunk a little bit on the sweater it like so the sleeves were down to here when I finish them and after washing they cinch right up the length of the sweater same thing you can't rip this yarn it's a singles I talked about it ad nauseum on the show over the course of a couple of episodes when I was talking about the sweater um, and when I was knitting it and working on it however I have worn it a ton um, it was cold and drizzly this morning James had cross country before school so we were there early and I grabbed it threw it on didn't think twice have a tank top underneath and it's warm and it's great under my rain jacket because it keeps me warm but it's also um, um like moisture proof it doesn't you don't feel like that cold wet air gets into your bones quite so much so anyway it's very lovely love this sweater um, and yeah it's the embers by uh, tin can knits and I just adjusted the number of yoke increases and where the yoke increases fell so that I could kind of knit a size in between um, I was I was in between sizes. In hindsight, I would do the size that was would have been a little bit too big, um, so that I so that when it washed and finished and it kind of you know cinched up a little bit, I would have had a little bit more positive ease. Just because I like my stuff a little bit looser and a little bit less fitted than I did years ago. Um, I think my aesthetic has kind of changed a little bit. So yeah. Um, it's good to see everybody here in chat. Thank you so much for being here. It's so good to have everybody. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm so glad that you're able to be here for the live stream. I hope that posting reminders and stuff on Instagram and on the Slack channel and whatnot helps. Um, let me know. And uh, we've got a lot a lot to cover today. So let's get right into it. I've got giveaway stuff to announce and I've got... Um, I've got all sorts of things. I've got some works in progress. I've got some uh, works that have kind of stalled for a few moments. I've got Knit City recap, which is um, a big chunk of the show that's pre-recorded so that I wouldn't forget because it's over. It's almost two weeks ago now. So um, we've got that coming up. So let's just get right into it. Um, I'll just switch screens here. So the Sweet Georgia... I just wanted to remind everybody quickly, we've got the ongoing giveaway. I didn't want to do a double giveaway this show. Um, because we've got the giveaway for um, the Attune Shawl Spin Along Knit Along. And so we're doing that today. So this will be next show. We'll do the giveaway for this. And it's two boxes. It's for to celebrate my new, my, my most recent workshop coming out on the School of Sweet Georgia. Um, I've got two fiber kits. One is rare, one is goats to give away. So please enter because you have double... You have a double chance to, to win something. So I'll be sending those out in the mail for you guys. Um, and we'll do the drawing next week and I'll award the um, prizes. So the question to answer is, what does luxury spinning mean to you? And I think it was Nicole that um, that suggested that. Um, whoever it was, I think it was Nicole. Um, thank you so much. I thought that was a great prompt. And this finishes off my luxury spinning workshop. So all of the modules have been released now. They're all out and good to go and ready to go. So I hope that you guys um, 
enjoy that on the School of Sweet Georgia and enjoy that content. I hope that it's helpful to you and I hope that you enjoy it. Um, let's go on to... Uh, let's not turn myself off. <laughs> I have so much to share with you guys that I just have to like slow down and make sure that I have it all, I have it all queued up and ready to go for you guys. And I just, I always have to remind myself I can slow down and like make sure I'm clicking the right thing and uh, just taking my time. But I always feel that, um, I would love to hear from you guys. I always, so when I'm doing the podcast and doing the live stream, I'm very cognizant of time and I'm very cognizant of how long the show is because it gets longer and longer and longer every year that we do this. So the show used to be like 35, 45 minutes and then it crept up to like 50 minutes, 60 minutes. It was a full hour. And then it kind of crept up to like an hour, an hour and 10 minutes. Now it, we're like pushing an hour and a half most episodes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just something that I'm very aware of and I think about. So um, that's why sometimes I feel like I'm talking really fast and it's like pressured speech, but it's because of that um, feeling in, in the background of like that, that, that there's the time pressure. So I just need to slow down and like remind myself it's okay. We've got lots of time and we can always save it for another show and I can always record a little supplemental thing for in between um, if I don't get to everything. So for this month for our year of color study, we are doing the final contrast, the final color contrast. I feel like this has been coming for so long because we started the first color contrast back in March and we've been working on it steadily every month. I have to admit, I'm really glad to be done them, but I also am really thankful for the amount of learning that we did. We did so much this month or uh, over the course of the summer, so, so, so much. So contrast of proportion is the last color contrast. It is the least influential contrast. It's the one that's not um, of all of them, if you were to drop one, this would be the one. What I really enjoyed about putting together this month's color, this month's contrast content for you guys, for all the patrons of the show. So this is the teaching content that comes with your Patreon membership um, when you join the community. Um, it's a vlog that I record and write every month that's released for you guys. Even if you just pledge $3 a month, you get access to it every single month. Um, it's a huge amount of work. I really enjoy doing it. I think every so often about dropping it and I just, I can't bring myself to do that because I really enjoy putting together this stuff for you guys. I have been waiting for this to be released because there is a huge sweater project associated with this month's content and I talk about the yarn in this month's content and I hone in on the one that I'm going to do for that sweater. So I'm really excited for you guys to see this. It's coming up in the next week or so to so watch for that as in your emails um, that, the, that, that it's been released. Woolen Spinning Radio, another super exciting um, uh, announcement this month with Crystal and Rebecca. We are going to see, we, we finished our Attune shawl spin along, knit along, and it really brought the community together. It was really fun to see everybody um, come together, chat, do all the things together, really support one another, and I wanted to keep that momentum going till the end of the year. So we're going to look at core spun for the rest of the year. If you have never spun core spun before, this is your chance. Um, you can always just do a little skein, you know, uh, a, a little, you know, tester skein to give it a try. Um, for those who've done it before, push yourself, do a skein of, of course fun, putting in a technique or doing a fiber prep that you've not done before. Um, so this is an opportunity to just get started with some textured yarn spinning, working on something quietly in the background. It doesn't have to be major. It doesn't have to be a huge skein, just something small over the next couple of months. There will be prizes in December and I will um, announce more about that at another time, but that's just sort of putting it out there. So we'll talk about it in just a minute. I'm going to put a pin in a pin in that, but that's Wool and Spinning Radio this month. It's been released. Please have a look. Uh, the Wool Circle, Rebecca has been doing a, a deep dive into combo spinning and combo drafting, combining lots of different colors together. I hope you guys really enjoy that. And the first episode of the Wool Circle is already out this month. The next one will stream at the same time next Tuesday as the live stream streams. So we'll have uh, that constant Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. going throughout the month for you guys. 
Queries is meeting next Saturday, October 14th, and Spinning Staples is meeting next Wednesday, October 11th. And I hope that you guys are able to attend those. If you're curious about those more formal groups that are um, part of um, uh, the Patreon, please uh, have a look at patreon.com slash well for uh, slash wool and spinning, and then you guys can see what the options are for, for the more, more formal groups that meet and get together. And, uh, you know, we provide guidance for one another. We help each other. Um, there's a weekday time and a weekend time, and you guys can have a look and see what works for you. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the core spin along. So basically with the core spin along, I'm just asking you guys to, to think about a textured yarn technique core spinning um, and start to think about how you might be able to implement that into a project that you're doing at this point. These are all the core spun yarns that I have spun over the years. I've spun more, but I just highlighted a few of them. The idea with this course spin along is to sort of prime us for content for next year. We'll be looking um, next year, the teaching content is gonna go, it's gonna be all about yarn structure, textured spinning. We're gonna look at Sarah Anderson's book of yarn designs. We're gonna look at some conventional yarns. We're gonna kind of look at how do we become better spinners just in general? What are some of the things that we need to be thinking about um, around yarn consistency, around um, controlling our fiber, the quality of our fiber prep, um, what we can do at the wheel with different twist directions and, and what we can create. So that's kind of what's, what's gonna be coming up in the new year. I haven't fine tuned it all, but I will get there. So that's coming up. So for the for the remainder of the year, um, have a have a look through your stash, see if there's something that you maybe want to core spin and uh, and do it. Uh, Kristen is asking, do you usually use commercial yarn for the core? I do. Um, we talk about that actually, what to use for the core in the wool and spinning radio episodes. So that's a great question, Kristen. Um, Kirsten, sorry. One of the things that we, we talk about is sort of the idea of like a mohair core because it's grabby and it really grabs the fiber. Um, we talk about a thicker core for a thicker yarn versus trying to pile more fiber on. So there's lots of things that you can do and we've got lots of exciting things happening. So yeah, keep the questions coming about core spun and we'll, we'll keep answering them over the next number of, of um shows the next number of months. My Instagram will be all core spun for the next number of weeks. Um, not this week, but starting next week, I'm going to have, you know, lots of tips and tricks being posted around yarns that I've made, why I made it that way, that kind of thing for the remainder of the year to kind of keep the momentum going with the core spinning. All right. Um, we have, I wanted to talk really quickly about the idea of the capstone. Um, the capstone is kind of the an idea where we can um, take all of our year of color stuff and put it all into one final project. So whether it's like a sweater, maybe it's a simpler project, you want to make some mitts or a toque, something that's smaller, not simpler, but smaller. Um, it's an The idea is to take everything that we learned around value and hue and uh, proportion, saturation, what else did we learn you guys? Um, we've learned so much about shades and tints and tones and how these play together. We've learned about the red, yellow, blue colorway and color wheel and we've also learned about the CMYK color wheel. And then we kind of push those color wheels and use different colors for our, our primaries and tried to figure out what other colors we could get. So the idea is to kind of look at this past year and see how we might come up with something to sort of summarize all of that learning and to summarize what we maybe could do. So I'm, I've, I'm continuing to think about mine. I'm gonna stick a pin in the capstone for a moment, but I just wanted to mention what could this look like for you? What might you wanna make? What might you wanna do? Um, I am already actively working on mine, so we'll come back to this uh, later in the show. We also have a ton of group Zooms coming up. So um, at, on Fridays at 9 a.m., the two groups alternate, the fiber prep group with the weaving group. Sarah and Dion, Sarah, I don't know where that came from. Lisa and Dion host these groups. Um, the weaving group is recorded so that we can sort of, you know, catalog some of that knowledge and keep some of that knowledge. And um, uh, I, if you can, if you can't make it to one, jump into the other and give it a try. And then on Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. before the live stream, we've got virtual spin group uh, hosted by Glenda. So thank you to everybody for hosting. 
Book club, book club, book club, book club. We are up and running again. We are reading The Crow Eaters by Bapsi Sidwa. She, it is a Parsi, um, she is Parsi, but uh, it's a, it's about a Parsi community, about a, about a gentleman named Freddie. It is really funny. I am surprised at how funny it is. So our first book club meeting, I had only just gotten the book that the night before, so I hadn't started reading. And everybody was saying about how fast it was, like it's a fast read, and everybody was saying about how funny it was. And I was like, well, how funny can this be? Like, it's kind of a serious topic. And I'm like reading it, it's funny. It really is funny. Um, some of the stuff that happens to him because of his own actions and because of the actions of, of those around him, uh, particularly his mother-in-law, who's highly dysfunctional, it's really funny. So anyways, great pick, Becca, Becca I'm really enjoying this. Um, I think our next book club is on, on Monday the 9th, but I could be wrong, it might be the one after. Um, it is a Canadian uh, long weekend this week, this coming weekend. We just had a long weekend for Truth and Reconciliation, and now we've got um, the long weekend coming up this weekend. Um, Thanksgiving, so I'm not sure if we're meeting on Monday or not. Um, we might push it to the Monday afterward, but regardless, um, I'm really enjoying the book. I hope you guys are willing to jump in and do it as well. There's been quite a few links posted in the hashtag books channel on Slack. If you don't wanna to try to find a physical copy of the book, uh, it is a bit difficult to find, but there are free audio versions online to listen and it, it it's a fast read so you could listen to it quite quickly and you'd be able to catch up no problem we only talked about the first few chapters um at our last book club so definitely jump in if you can because it's uh yeah it's been a really fun really fun uh uh read so far all right let's talk about the attune shawl so the attune shawl spin along knit along the hashtag spin to knit attune uh it has finished i locked the thread and I have a lot of prizes to announce. So let's do that next. Let me just pull up my little trusty cheater sheeter here. Um, all right, on my cheat sheet, I have, I've got eight, nine, 10, 11 prizes to give away. Thank you so much to Andrea Maori for sponsoring this, for wanting to do this um, along with us. It was a pleasure to do this with her. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I just really appreciate her offering um, some giveaway prizes, but also um, offering the pattern discount originally from when we started. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Andrea. So the first winner, I went through the FO thread. Um, there were almost 50 projects in total. And um, if you hear your name and you're in chat, I know one or two people for sure are here. So um, congratulations in advance. And I am gonna post your Ravelry names as I go through this. So Andrea had two braids of spun right round. If you guys have been around in the spinning world long enough, you will know spun right round. She's one of the indie dyers that's been doing it for years and years and years. When I first started spinning, she was already dying. So um, really well, well established. Um, so one of those two braids is going to Ellen, post number six, and her Ravelry um, username is, um, uh, is posted in the live chat and she's here today in the live chat. So congratulations, Ellen. Um, you just need to get in touch with Andrea. I will connect with you on how to do that, but you just need to get in touch with Andrea and let her know that you won one of the spun right round braids. The second one is post number 30, and this one is going to Tanya. Um, her, I've also posted her username in the chat. Um, that second braid of spun right round is going to Tanya. All right, now for Andrea also offered a couple of Ravelry patterns to give away. And um, so, it, sorry, offered a couple of patterns to give away. So you can pick a pattern that you would like to have her um, gift to you. And the first one is Mario. Uh, he won one of, those, one of those patterns. And Nicolette won the second one. It is so much fun to give stuff away. You feel like Santa Claus. It's so much fun. All right, now I made um, these little fiber kits. These little um, uh, hands, they're, they're uh, fiber. It's the RYB colorway, uh, sorry, color wheel. I keep saying colorway, I mean color wheel. Um, royal blue with a really rich scarlet red and a blue and a green and a yellow that was called buttercream. And I have made this the, the 12 step color wheel, color wheel that will, these are different colors, but it will spin up like this. So these are each 
two gram samples of fiber and they're in order. So you just spin like from one side and then you zig down to the other and then the other and then the other. So they're already in order for you and it will create a 12 step color wheel for you in the RYB color wheel. And I made three of these. My kids thought I was absolutely crazy to give away. So the first person to win, and I made sure that you guys were all spinners, the, the people that won. So the first one is goes to Laura. And the second one is gonna go to Simone, who is actually a relatively new member of our wool and spinning community. So congratulations to Simone. And the third one is going to Megan. So those are your Ravelry names in the, in the chat. Um, and congratulations to you guys. And then the third, in, the fourth person that won um, is not a spinner. So I am going to gift you, Emily, a skein of Dizdaro Ranch CVM Co. And this is what I used to make my uh, my mandolin cardigan, which I love. This is this skein has been washed and. Um, uh, Emily, I will uh, send that out to you when I get your mailing address. And that's there. It's Dizdaro Ranch's CVM Co. And this is just a fantastic tweedy yarn. You guys have heard me wax poetic about it. This is in the lichen colorway. And then uh, Giselle, um, she is a uh, follower of the podcast. And she offered, she's been trying to de-stash. And she actually offered three people from our community the opportunity to go through her stash on Ravelry and pick something that they wanted to um, try or have and she would mail it out to them. So thank you so much Giselle for doing that. She's out of the country until the end of the week but um, if you connect with her she will send stuff out to you next week. And so that is Jay Ransko because I don't know what your first name is. You don't have it on your Ravelry profile. Uh, Marina and Jeanette and I've posted your names in the live chat. So congratulations to everybody. Um, thank you so much for participating in the Attune Shawl Along and uh, thank you for posting your, your, your FOs, your finished photos. And thank you so much for just um, participating and for being excited about it and for, for wanting to do it. Uh, it. It meant a lot and it was a really fun along and it lasted for a long time. And the fact that people did so much spinning during Tour de Fleece for it, it intentionally, they planned, that was what they wanted to do and they executed, it was so cool to see. So thank you so much, you guys. All right, we have even more to talk about, but we need to run the intro credits. So we'll do it now, and then I'll tell you about Knit City when we get back. A thank you to our sponsor, Brother Drum Carter. They are dedicated to giving you the very best of carding products with a focus on quality, affordability, and customer satisfaction. They are building mill processing equipment, so please stay tuned. Be sure to check out the new products on their website and follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Brother Drum Carter. It's so funny because Nicole was saying um, 25 minutes in until the intro credits, can it still be called that? It needs to be called like a midway break. Um, and it's funny because I go back every so often I have to look at old shows because I'm looking for something in particular and I and I realized that I actually forgot to run the credits because <laughs> we got so far into the show. So it does happen, it does happen um, where things get things get forgotten and things get lost. All right, um, so I really, Knit City, it is such a pleasure every year to go and to participate and to be there. Um, I have some things to share with you about Knit City. There is one um, part of this where 
I take a video of Nora in, um, I'm not going to spoil it what it was, but we were in like an area and when I was editing the video, I forgot to mute the video. So you hear a lot of background noise from the actual show from the recording and I'm talking over top. So it will get a little bit loud for, it's only for a couple of minutes. So I am sorry about that. It was just um, really poor. I just didn't catch it on the editing. It was my fault. So I hope you guys enjoy the recap. So here's a bit of a recap of Knit City this past weekend. I've got some photos to share with you and I brought home some things to work on over the next number of months, probably a couple of years, let's be honest. And uh, I wanted to share with you sort of what, what I found and, and how the weekend went. Um, by the time we are streaming all of this, it will be October 3rd and it'll be over a week and a half later. And honestly, it'll just be hard to remember all the things and not end up just rambling on because it's, not as fresh in my mind as as it was so there was a lecture on friday night and i ended up not going we ended up being in vancouver all day on friday um it was a it wasn't uh pre organized it was sort of a last minute opportunity that we had so me and the kids were in vancouver all day and we got stuck in traffic coming out of vancouver and by the time we got home the kids still had to get to soccer it, it just ended up being a bit a bit too much for one day to then go back into Vancouver that night for the lecture. So I was sorry not to spend that time with Glenda and um, all of our, our friends. So uh, I didn't end up going into in on Friday night. But on Saturday, we had soccer all morning. I had queries to host with you with some of you guys. We had a lovely session. And I ended up heading into uh, Knit City in the afternoon. And what was really fun was in the afternoon, um, me and Diana Twist and Kim McKenna, and many of you know who Diana is because of being part of the community and you guys have a relationship with her and many of you are friends with her. Um, we were able to uh, do a demo Greta, uh, put it all together, and we were able to uh, demo some of the fiber prep techniques that the three of us use in our spinning. And uh, it was really fun to connect with people in real life and to see people that I hadn't seen since, some of them since Fibers West and some of them since Knit City last year. So that was really fun. It's, you know, it's all of our local crew, right, that we don't get to see and that we don't get to have that opportunity and that time to spend together. And it was just so good to see everybody. And this isn't a great photo of me, but I was talking about the lock pop. Uh, Kim was talking about prepping fiber that needs to just be opened up and air added back into it on the hang cards and dizzing it off. Um, she showed people how to do row legs. And then Diana was showing how to do that initial sampling and what we're looking for in our plyback tests and some of the things to be thinking about which was really, really fun. I got to spend some time with my friend Margaret and with Ruth and with um, Greta, obviously, because of the school, uh, Sweet Georgia stuff, and my friend Sarah Elizabeth of Sarah Elizabeth Fiberworks. We went for a little bit of a walk around the, the uh, main uh, market hall. Of course, I got to see Tessa for a few minutes. She's wearing her gorgeous mock neck tank, which is fantastic. She's wearing a handmade outfit and it just looked awesome on her. Um, that's my friend Mai in the background there. Um, she's the Anoxia Spindles gal who makes all of those. So it's just really wonderful to spend that time. My friend Kathy, my friend Susie, to spend that time together. So um, that was Saturday afternoon. I didn't really get a chance to walk around the marketplace too, too much, but I sort of started to see a few people, saw Sarah, um, saw my friend Lori of uh, Disdaro Ranch, saw Lynn of West Coast Color, and got it. had an opportunity to just um, spend some time chit-chatting with them. Didn't really buy anything, didn't really um, spend any time looking at actual like, merchandise, but definitely had an opportunity to, to see people. So on Sunday, um, I ended up taking Nora back with me. So we had soccer all morning on Sunday, and then... Um, we ate a really quick lunch and I said to her, it's only open until four o'clock for the marketplace. I do need to go back to connect with a couple of people. Um, some stuff that I had sort of organized on Saturday and I needed to follow up about on uh, Sunday. And I said like, do you want to come with me? And oh my goodness, people were so nice to her. It was fantastic. And I had told her about, um, uh, ginger snap yarns and I had told her about this little area that they had that was um, uh, UV black light UV um, activated yarn and Nora was like I'm coming with you <laughs> 
So I was like, okay. So I have a little video of what it was like in the Ginger Snap booth. They had this area of their booth that was kind of um, uh, curtained off and uh, inside they had the, the black light. And so I'm just giving you guys a, a fair warning here. There is some bright lights in this. The camera moves really super quickly and uh, Nora's standing there waving. Uh, so if you're sort of sensitive to anything like that, bright lights or anything, um, the camera moving quickly, any of that kind of stuff, just fair warning, um, you might wanna look away. Uh, so this is this was their booth, uh, this little curtained off area and it's all this yarn that's black light. Uh, UV black light um, activated. Black light reactive is what it's called. So really, really, really fun. Nora was just like in, in yarn heaven. She does know how to knit, which many of you guys know. Um, and the, they had bags that were black light activated and they had all this um, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas stuff that was really fun. Nora was just like, it's totally gimmicky. And this is the kind of stuff that's just really fun, you know? I'll turn off the video now. Um, so what we ended up doing, Nora and I, uh, was I let her pick a skein. Um, she chose this one. It's called Have I Gone Mad? And Colin does most of their dyeing now because um, the, I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Oh my goodness. Um, the lady who runs Ginger Snap, she is busy making all their bags and their bags are fantastic. Um, they're really well made, well made uh, project bags. So he does most of the dyeing now. But under black light, this um, is is uh, looks like a speckle. So Nora has asked me to do the mock neck tank for her in her size, and I have pulled the slack, the uh, the hive mind, if you will, on in the wool and spinning community to find out from them like what they think I should do about sizing because the pattern is written for uh, adults, and Nora is nine, but her chest circumference is uh, in line with one of the sizes. Uh, in the pattern, her, her chest circumference is the, is the smallest size. But I don't want to knit it with a whole bunch of negative ease because I would like it to fit her for a while. So anyways, I, I pulled the hive mind. We'll talk about this in the future on the podcast as I get it going. But I let her get that. And uh, she was just over the moon. And then my friend Brittany of Crux Fiber, she was so kind and so generous. She actually gave this to Nora. So this is a whole bunch of mini skeins of 100% untreated blue face lister, so BFL. And um, it's fingering weight, it's two ply, and it's just got these great colors. Nora is in love with, with these two in particular. Uh, Nora let me know at the festival that apparently these are her favorite colors. <laughs> Who knew? So she was picking out everything at the festival that was this this kind of minty green with this hot pink. And she just, everything was like, mommy, I, I like this, I like this, I like this. And I had told her when we went in to the festival to keep her expectations really low that she would even be able to get anything um, because things are expensive and um, it's all handmade, it's all hand dyed. I said to her like, you're not gonna be able to get anything. But she was over the moon when Brittany um, gave these to her. And this is, um, Brittany's of Crux Fiber. She's an indie dyer of Crux Fiber. She's doing amazing things for the for the Canadian uh, fiber shed, wool, wool fiber shed. Um, fantastic so uh, this is uh, this was really kind of her and Nora was just over the moon so the other thing that I did on Saturday was I connected with Lori of Dizdaro Ranch and of course I've known Lori for um, quite a long time now and um, we had a whole conversation about yarn and we always are ch chatting about yarn and one of the things that she had offered me at Fibers West was actually um, some mohair yarn that she's got. And um, I wasn't sort of in a place at Fibers West to be able to take her up on her offer of sort of doing a bit of a yarn review of this of this mohair because um, to be honest with you, I just wasn't in the right headspace. And so what I ended up doing was knowing that uh, she would be offering, like that, that, that this yarn would be there, that she would have it on offer at, the, at Knit City. I went with a plan in mind um, so that I could, you know, look at this yarn for her. And I'm just going to look up the um, specific, um, um, stats of this yarn so that I can be accurate when I'm talking about it. So this is a DK weight, uh, mohair yarn. It's 80% mohair that Lori grows on her own, on her ranch. It's from her goats. 
and 20% Romney, which I know Alberto is going to cringe. Um, it's a long wool. It's very drapey. It's got a lovely halo to it. I don't know if you guys can see that there. It's got a, a real halo and it's 190 yards or 174 meters to 100 grams. And of course, mohair is a little bit heavier. We wouldn't expect really, really great yardage um, when we've got mohair just because of that weight. So, um, I had kind of gone to Knit City knowing that that um, I would um, offer to do the yarn review that Lori had, had asked me about in March. And I don't want to take on another really big sweater project. I've never worked with this yarn before. The other piece of that sort of puzzle is I don't want to commit to doing another big sweater and then feel like I've got this deadline on me that I can't honor right away. So I actually chose something that is um, a little bit different for me and it's a, it's a dicky. Um, I don't know um, another way to call it. Um, this is a pattern by Anna Ventzel. Ventzel. Uh, she calls it the cozy cowl and what I really liked about this was I actually googled patterns that used mohair yarn so of course a lot of like silk mohair kid silk mohair all that kind of stuff that all came up kid mohair silk so I was looking for some patterns that were a little bit higher percentage of mohair and this pattern came up because I also searched for patterns that used alpaca um, because of course they have some of those same characteristics of that drape and um that ability to grow. And last winter, because we had some really cold weather, I wanted something that I could throw on over top of like something like what I'm wearing right now, which I'll tell you about in a second, um, and have something really warm up around my neck and something that was just sort of a little bit cozier without adding a whole bunch of bulk under my parka because I'm finding that, you know, my big shawls and stuff, like it's just too much bulk. So this particular pattern kept coming up again and again, and it does have quite a bit of patterning, but I think the twisted rib will work okay with the mohair and the gauge is, is right. So I'll do some swatching and I, I got two skeins of this to make this uh, dicky and I'll keep you guys posted on how, on how it goes. So that was the first thing that I got. And then on Sunday when we went back, in the Disdero Ranch uh, booth, I got chatting with a girl named Kate and she's knit motif on Ravelry and she's an absolute firecracker, a lovely, lovely lady, woman. And um, uh, she was, she had brought a sweater that she, to show Lori uh, and Mona, cause Mona works with Lori as well. She's, she, uh, the two of them are, are just a total power team, the two of them. And the sweater was this, I'll, I'll kind of talk about these two things at the same time. I am playing total and complete copycat, which is the highest form of compliment, but she knit this sweater called Snow Crocus. And this is a pattern by Midori Heros. Um, it, she publishes under Knit Cafe Midori. And um, it's a uh, uh, cabled, all over cabled sweater. It's a, uh, you hold multiple yarns together. And um, this bulky row ram, which is a, um, one of Dizdero Ranch's singles yarn, and it's a Romney, let me see if I can find it while we're chatting. She calls it Row, Row Ram, um, because it's a, I might have to look for it later, because I, I don't see it coming up here. Romney Bulky, here it is. So this is in the color Ash, and um, they used to call it silver and it's a 100% Romney singles spun yarn. So I'll go back to the main screen here to show it to you. It's a singles spun yarn. This is washed. The thing with singles is that it often compacts down quite a bit. So Kate was saying that she and the fabric that she got on that bulky sweater was just incredible. Um, her sweater came up a little bit tighter around the collar, not quite as much positive ease. Um, she did knit the 42 inch um, uh, size, but it came out more of like a 38 it, after after uh, knitting and swatching and stuff, and it, it was just a perfect fit. So I'm playing total copycat. I got five skeins of this to make that sweater, and um, it was just something fun um, that I was excited about. So there, so there was that. 
The other thing I got was my sweater. I did buy this on Saturday because I saw it and they had one left in my size and I jumped at it. So this is from um, That Yarn Habit and there uh, it says knit and it says it's not just a hobby, it's a lifestyle. And I saw it and I, I just was like, yep, I love it. I wear stuff like this all the time when I'm just working at home. Um, it's cozy. It's well. It's a it's a higher quality uh, sweatshirt, like a little bit thicker. Um, they're unisex, so she said to me when I was trying to figure out sizing and whatnot, they didn't have any extra small. This is a small. Um, it's pretty big on me, but. Um, that said, uh, it will shrink a little bit when I wash it, although they are pre-shrunk. She said it will kind of cinch down a little bit if I put it through the dryer one time, because I don't want to put it through the dryer a lot because it'll ruin the um, the, the printing. But um, if you're looking at sizes and stuff, this is, this is a nice positive ease for just a, a comfortable sweatshirt to wear. Um, and so that's from that yarn habit. The other thing that I bought was actually from uh, Bramble Ridge um, Hand Dyed Yarns, and this is uh, Megan, and she had developed a colorway for Knit City, and this is Knit City 23, so this is like, it doesn't really have a name, it's just um, the, the colorway that she developed for Knit City, and this is uh, Polworth, Untreated Polworth. And I saw this at the um, Knit Night on Saturday night, and I couldn't resist. I, I went back and I, I got this because I don't really buy braids of fiber, which you guys know, but I saw the colorway that it was part of the giveaway uh, for Knit City and I, I went back and I got it. So uh, that is that, it's on Polworth. Uh, it was lovely to, to finally meet Megan in person and I wanted to support her. So I bought some BFL and this is her colorway scruff. So these are all the colors that make her think of men's beards. That's why it's called scruff. And then this last one is uh, also BFL. BFL is one of my favorite things to spin. If you're a newer spinner and you're just trying to find something that's easy to spin, that is not difficult, you get a nice get nice results. Um, BFL or Corydale are great options. Um, so this is also untreated. When they say untreated, it means it's not superwash. Um, this is uh, BFL untreated BFL in Tide Pool. So these are all the colors that you would find in Tide Pools. So really fun to play with these. Um, I'll probably spin them up as two plies, use them for toques, that kind of thing. I'm not going to do a whole heck of a lot with them. And then the last thing that I got was a giveaway. Um, I got a copy of Francine McCabe's new book, Fleece and Fiber, Textile Producers of Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands. So I'm really excited to get into this. This was the lecture on the Saturday night. It was on Fiber Shed um, in our local Fiber Shed here in the Pacific Northwest. And um, I won Francine's book. It is signed, which is really fun. I was able to get her to sign it. And uh, she just did an interview on CBC Radio, which I unfortunately missed, but I, I thought was really great. But it's a rundown of all, it's beautifully photographed. Um, it's a rundown of all of the um, different uh, fleeces, sh uh, sheep uh, breeds that we have access to in our local fiber shed here. And she goes into all sorts of different, um, uh, mostly wool fibers. Then there's a section devoted to um, goats and rare fibers, cellulose based fibers, but it's mostly wool, um, which is really great to see. So it'll be really fun to see how this compares to a spinner's book of fleece and the fleece and fiber source book. So um, I'm excited to, to get into this and to, to read this. Um, it's, it's part of my own local fiber shed. And so um, I, I, my plan is to read this um, cover to cover. So super excited about that. And thank you so much to Knit City for the giveaway. And I can't believe I won. <laughs> so overall, a really positive week. I did win a skein of yarn with this. Um, it's from the San Juan, um, San Juan uh, Fiber Works, um, Sarah Pope's stuff that she's doing. Um, San Juan Fiber. Um, she's just down over the border, Woolworks, San Juan Woolworks. And I won one of her skeins of yarn that's her fin. And it's uh, two, it's uh, milled at Custom Woolen Mills, I think. I might be wrong about that actually, don't quote me on that. Um, but I, it's, it's fin and one of the, uh, it's called their Skyhop yarn. 
and it's a marl. So there's two ply, uh, two, two singles of, it's the gray heather. Let me see if I can find it. Nope, that's not the right color. It's like a, a creamy white kind of a color. Anyhow, it's a marled yarn and it's two uh, strands of creamy white and then one strand of um, like a tawny, tawny brown. It's a warm kind of. So I'm excited about using that probably in a toque. Um, and it came from lamb's wool that was a thin BFL cross. So that'll be really fun to play with. Um, and also I actually thought I would take a piece of it and deconstruct it and figure out how many twists they put in it and, and how it's made so that I can um, play with it and, and sort of see if I could maybe reconstruct it myself. So that was, that was the, uh, the yarn that I won, which was really cool. I did get some le some more leather buttons from um, from um, Long Way Homestead, and the only reason was because I I um, had bought some buttons back at Knit City last year, and I'm going to use them on my. Uh, pressed flowers car uh, cardigan even though I haven't I haven't sewn them on yet don't tell the cardigan but it will get these pretty buttons but I wanted to have a few more sets of these on hand because these are just so useful and it's getting really hard to get buttons locally <coughs> the last thing that I got I did get a, a, a skein of the uh, black like active reactive yarn for myself because I really wanted to knit a Halloween shawl for myself. It probably won't be done for this year, but I wanted to, I'll find a pattern. This is called Dirty Sprite. And um, this is again, very speckled, very subtle. Um, the black light um, reactive dye will be um, very subtle in the finished the finished skein. I figure I'll find some uh, either, either white or probably I was going to say black, but it makes the, sh the overall shawl really super dark. So I may only knit a shawl just with this and not have a contrast color. Um, but I, I, um, um, I just, I couldn't resist. <laughs> what I would love to do is use these together, but I know Nora really, really wants her, her tank top. So there you have it. So that was Knit City. It was a lot of fun. It was a really great weekend. I'm absolutely exhausted because we were trying to put family stuff in and around everything and that's just tiring. And uh, But otherwise, we had just an awesome weekend and thank you for listening. Thank you so much for listening and for participating in that. Thank you for all the chat messages while we were going. I really appreciate it. And it's fun for me to be able to share with you guys sort of what I'm working on and what I'm doing because sometimes it kind of gets lost. Um, you know, the stuff that happens like outside of just the podcast and my actual projects, there's this whole world that goes on. So yeah, Rebecca says when I knit up the uh, black light, um, the UV reactive yarn. So you'll have to install a black light on the porch and then answer the, to answer the door for trick treaters. I was wondering about that. I was like, how would we be able to do that? And Nora's already asked for a uh, black light in her room. <laughs> She's like, then I can wear my shirt. I was like, oh my gosh, so funny. All right, let's get into the rest of the show and let's start first with fiber preparation because I have, um, stuff to share about my capstone. So let's, let's start there. Right, so the capstone, I kind of teasered this a little bit earlier um, when I was talking a little bit about sort of what we could do with our capstone projects. So what I have decided at this point, and it could change again, is to sort of loosely spin for the Grey Roop sweater, which is a pattern from Camilla Vad. And what I was kind of excited about is this has been in my queue um, and has been an idea of mine for a really long time. So it was just a matter of going through my Ravelry projects page and like resurrecting this because it had been hibernating. I had changed the, the uh, title on it. So as we're thinking about our capstone projects for the Year of Color um, projects, one of the things that I was thinking about was I want to make something that I'm going to wear and I want to make something that is a play with value because value is what we see first when we look at 
pieces of clothing and when we're doing a lot of color work we designers often do play a lot with value and with lighter and darker yarns to give you that idea of contrast and, and to help to give sort of a three dimensionality to the knitted fabric when you look at like Marie Wallen's patterns if you look at some of the Alice Starmore patterns they use value and so from a distance um, you see that first and the overall feeling of the garment is what you actually see feel first and see first. So one of the things I really liked about this was it starts light at the top and it sort of slowly uh, becomes darker as you move your way down. So what I have started working on is this sort of little um, carding project and let me, I wasn't sure where to put this stuff to show you guys. So let me just move this. So what I started with, this is all Corydale because those are the colors that I had bought. Um, I had bought based on color, not based on um, not based on fiber when I bought what I wanted for the all of my year of color sampling like all of this color wheel stuff that I was doing all year and this stuff that I did for the show I, I bought based on color so that I could get all of the colors of the color wheel um, and and no and also so that I knew that I would be able to get them again. So if I ran out of the yellow, I could get it again. If I got, ran out of blue, I could get it again. And I have placed a couple of orders as the year has gone on just to get more colors. So like I got this color here, I think it's called like strawberry or something. It was a slightly different red I wanted to try. I bought this blue, it was a slightly different blue. It's not as teal as what and turquoise as what the camera is registering. This is more of like a sky blue. And so over the course of the year, it was more a matter of being able to get color. So what I did with the Corydale is this is just white undyed Corydale, so nothing special there. But this is a 30-30-30 blend of red, yellow, and blue. So this is a triadic colorway. We're gonna learn more about color harmonies coming up in November. So for those of you who haven't explored color harmonies yet, or you're just getting ca caught up on the year of color content, um, we're gonna talk more about this in November. But this is a triadic, it's equal parts red, yellow, and blue. And I have played at the beginning of the year, if you guys remember on the podcast, I played with tints and shading and whatnot with the, the triadic and I made a whole, I think I actually have it here. I don't normally get up and walk away in the middle of a show, but this is actually really important. So this is all of my, these are all of my little mini skeins and all the stuff that I have made. And then I have even more back there. So all of that stuff hanging there, that's all part of this year of color exploration that we've done. And some of this is with RYB and some of this is CMYK. So I always have to look at my little tags that are hanging off of the end of these to see, okay, was this with an RYB or was it with this with a CMYK? So these are my original samples. I should have grabbed these while we were doing the Knit City thing, but I, I, obviously dropped the ball on that, but that's okay. Now I need somewhere for this to hang. Um, so what I did here was, this is the uh, triad that's not um, got any white added to it. So this is just a straight triad blend here. Let me put it under here. Why am I trying to hold it to the small camera? This is the triad blend. So this is this um, un like spun. So this, no black has been added, no white has been added. This is just um, the straight triad. But then I did a 50-50 and that's this big sample here. And this is 50% uh, this fiber and 50% white Corydale. And you can see the plain white next to it. And this is the same, but with black added. So this is 50% triad, 50% black. And um, so it ends up being 30% yellow, 30%, no, that's not right. It ends up being, um, you know, a third, half of it is, is the triad and, and within that is the third of each color. I'm just confusing you, so just ignore what I'm saying. Anyhow, this is the un, untinted, unshaded one. It's just the one that spun. And I just loved this so much. And so I thought, you know what? Why don't I start off with just sampling that one to get myself started on one of the colors for my capstone and use that as the jumping point where about what I'm gonna add after that for the colors. So what I did was I took 30% of each um, color. So I, I weighed out 30 grams of each, 30, 30, 30. 
and um, and I, I blended them all up and I, I blended up a total of um, um, so I have a total, yeah, 30, 30, 30. I, I did the equivalent of sort of just shy um, of 200 grams of fiber in, in total. So I ended up doing 90 grams of this and 90 grams of this. That's what I ended up doing. So 180 total. Um, and so I had to card it all separately. And so I had to sort of do it all in like bits and pieces, like, cause my carder doesn't take 190 180 grams of fiber. So I carded these up, carded these up, and then from there, I carded them together. So I just kept stripping stuff apart and weighing it to make sure that I was keeping with the 50-50. And then once I got to this stage, and this is really actually quite pretty, you could you could just strip this and spin it. Um, it's, it's quite, this is only um, one pass through the drum carder, but at this point, it's pretty well blended. Um, it makes a really nice, um, a really, really beautiful um, fiber that comes off the carter. My, I use a Brother Drum Carter. I have a 90 times per inch liquor in brush, uh, liquor in, um, and I have a 120 times per inch Swift. So for those who are wondering, um, that's the Drum Carter from Brother that I have, and I have the standard, and I have the one that you turn with your right hand. So it's the right right-sided standard carter with the 90 times per inch liquor, liquor in and the 120 times per inch swift. And there's a discount code for Bro Brother Drum Carter down below in the show notes. And so then from there, I broke this up into these little nests of fiber. And as you can see, I haven't finished prepping all of it because I wanted to show you guys the stages. And then from there, I did spin another little sample. This is just two grams. And the reason for that is because I'm going to take this bigger one and I'm going to knit a swatch. So I wanted to at least have some leftovers like to, to know to have the, the, the swatch. I don't know if this is the right grist or not yet. I need to knit a swatch and see what the fabric comes out as. And the other reason why I wanted to use this one here was because I wanted to incorporate these two as well into the swatch and see what I thought about the, the differences in value because in the knitted fabric, it's going to look different. These might look really high, con this one's really high contrast, but these two look high contrast in the skeins, but when it's knitted up, I'm not sure it's going to be that high contrast. So I'm going to give that a try. So that's where I've, I'm just starting with my capstone. I'm not sure where I'm going to get to with my capstone, but that is kind of where I have started. And I have a basket full of these nests. They're just filling up. I just keep making them off my drum carter. Here's another one of these here that's ready to go. I just have to card these up, split them up, and keep throwing them into my basket here. And uh, that's how I've been organizing it. And then I'm going to spin them all, see what kind of grist I can calculate off of this little sample here and because I'll sample, I'll, I'll figure out my grist and then, um, and then I can go from there because that sweater project is, um, so this here is knit on four millimeter needles and I can't remember the exact gauge, but it's four millimeter needles and I'm not sure, I think my spinning is a little bit too fine for that. So then the next question is, do I go up to a three ply? Do I go to a four ply? What does that kind of look like? So just very, very slowly getting started with this project and um, just having a lot of fun. So yes, Christine's just clarifying. <coughs> it's 50% triad, 50% un undyed. So that was how I how I did that. And basic, what I was trying to explain earlier was the percentage of each of the colors in the 100%. So it's 50% white. For this little skein here, it's 50% white and then 17% yellow, 17% uh, red, and 17% blue. So hopefully that helps to clarify. Um, so 50-50, yeah. How different is that color from the grape jelly sweater? Um, Deirdre, you lost me. Oh, the grape jelly sweater, yes my grape jelly behind me. So let me go to the big camera. Um, in terms of the difference in color, it's actually quite significant. Um, this is quite a bit lighter um, and it's not quite as purple. So I don't have that yarn right here. Maybe I do. 
Do I have any in my little bag? Oh, I do. Um, let's see. Let's hold them up next to each other. So this is grayer. This is much more gray and um, it's not as warm. It's cooler. So this is cooler. This is a bit warmer, if you can believe. This is pretty cold still, but this is even colder. And this is much grayer. And this is more nuanced. This is more interesting than this. Um, the red in this is, a, is more interesting. When you look at the actual yarn, I'll take some up close macro photos of it so you guys can see. I'll post them on the Slack channel. Um, it's much, much more interesting, if that makes sense. It's, it's more interesting. It's, it's, um, it's prettier. It's prettier. Yeah. That's probably the best way to describe it. Yeah, great question, Deirdre. You just lost me for a minute because I wasn't thinking about Trinigan. And then you asked that question. It's like, what? <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? But now I, I'm with you. I, 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 what a great question. Yeah, very much more muted, Kirsten. Absolutely. And very cool. And it's funny because when you see it here, you think, oh, but that's so warm because this has almost like an orange undertone to it. Um, and um, a kind of a rusty kind of undertone. And yet um, adding the white to it um, just makes it that much cooler than, than a color, than this um, stock kind of stock dyed and spun. You know, we, it, it shows what we can do with, with our hand spun when we, when we have control over the fibers. So exciting. Um, yeah, a little bit. It pro I'm not surprised it's registering. Um, Christine is a little bit mother of pearlish. I'm, I'm not surprised about that just because um, it probably has a bit of a tough time registering. I'm not sure, like if I look at my screen here, because I see the one screen, but then the on YouTube, it's pretty close. So if your monitors are accurate, yeah, it's probably about right. So... All right, let's talk about some spinning. I am so excited to share this project with you guys. And I should have turned those off. Sorry about that. Okay, so in the Knit City video that I shared with you guys, I talked about Bramble Ridge hand dyed yarns. And I talked about... Um, uh, Megan's colorways and her stuff and you can see I've got um, one of the uh, braids already going on my wheel so I wanted to share with you what I did with this so what I did okay so I took the braid hang on oh my gosh <laughs> slow down mr. slideshow <laughs> so I took the braid tide pool so I, the reason why I started with this one was because I wanted to try something very specific and it's a technique that my friend Kim McKenna teaches and I've linked it in the show notes below um, at patreon.com slash wool and spinning and the actual link for the show notes is in, is down below in the, in the down bar. So if you want the, the, you don't want to just go to the landing page, you want to go to the specific post, it's right there linked for you. Um, but she talks about this technique where she, uh, takes the braid of fiber, she unbraids it. So this is untreated BFL. She unbraids it and um, has a look at the colorway, just like me and Diana Twist teach, you know, have a look at how the dye was laid on, where it was laid on, how it was laid on, all that kind of stuff. And then what she does is she clamps her hand card to the counter and she places the fiber into the, the card and she just lays it in the hand card. You're not really carding the fiber. You're just laying it into the teeth and it takes a minute to kind of wiggle it in there and to get the, the hang of it. But once you sort of are able to, to nestle it into the tines, she pulls out her diz and she starts to diz it off. And I have video of this, but the show is so long this week. And I knew that it would be a lot with the Knit City recap that I've saved it for next show. So we'll go through it next show. I'm hoping this yarn will be done next show and I can, I can share with you my reflections about this technique and about doing it. But basically what you're doing is you're just very gently dizzing it off. And I've linked to the spinoff article and the YouTube video that Kim wrote and recorded for spinoff. It's in the show notes. So just go to patreon.com and you can find it. But this is what resulted, was this beautifully attenuated combed top after. And I have to say, this braid of 
fiber was already beautifully dyed. Like I could have just stripped it down like I normally do, pre-drafted it a little bit and started spinning and it would have been beautiful to spin. It, there was nothing wrong with it. It's not like it had sat in my stash. It hadn't gotten, you know, compacted. It, it wasn't um, beaten up. There, no, nothing needed to be realigned or fixed or anything like that. But I wanted to give this technique a try because um, it's kind of a neat idea and it does create a really beautiful prep. And then from there, what I did was I actually looped it very loosely around one of my distaves, distaves, and you can see both of them back there. The, the second half of the braid is ready to go on the other distaff, but the one distaff that is there, I actually looped it through the top of my Susie, so you can see it there on its side, and it's looped through at the back above the bobbin there. It's actually out of the way, and it worked quite well, and I've been spinning off of it, kind of like what I do on my Kromsky Minstrel when I've got the distaff all, you know, um, loaded with fiber, which I haven't for a long time. But that's been working really quite well. And what I did with the distaff was instead of loading it really tightly like I used to, I used to roll it so that I could roll the fiber on really, really tight. And I like that because it's neat and it's tidy and it doesn't require any sort of fiber, like you don't have to secure it with a ribbon or anything like that. But the fiber at the bottom gets a bit compacted and some of that air gets compacted out of it from just the other fiber being rolled on top so tightly. And they do tend to stick together. The fiber, the wool fibers do kind of interlock and the, as you're rolling off the different layers off of the distaff af, as you spin, it does pull some of those bottom layers off. So I decided to try, Kim had shown me a different way where you kind of loop the distaff like this and it helps to add some twist to the roving that you've created. It, it puts a, a, a twist into that, into that, um, you know, basically hand pulled roving is what you're making off the hand card. Adds a little bit of twist to it so it secures it and it doesn't, it doesn't start to grab onto the fibers beneath. And it also just keeps it light and airy. So the bottom, uh, these bottom, I'm, I'm down to the last couple of um, layers and they're just as light and airy as they were when I first put them onto the distaff. I'm spinning from the same end of the braid for both of them so that the hopefully what I end up with is a long slow transition of color that um, the finished yarn has big sections where all of the orange meets up and all of the blue meets up and all of the brown meets up so we'll see my plan is for something like a shawl that would really show off the long slow transitions of color I was actually thinking really seriously about getting another couple of braids from Megan because same dyer, same colors, um, and doing something like a shifty, um, the, 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 what's it called? The, the night shift shawl, um, and having that, those big transitions of color, because that would work really well for a, for a pattern like that. I also thought about re-knitting the shifty pullover, but that might be a bit much. <laughs> we'll see, but I'm really enjoying the technique. I'll talk more about it next episode and give you some more reflections because I'll have done the second bobbin by then and I'll have some sort of summary ideas of what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it. Um, Dion's wondering if I split the braids in half before dizzing. So yes, I did. I don't think I mentioned that at the beginning, but what I did was I opened up the braid and then I split it in half down the middle lengthwise so that I had two strips of, un, uh, of, of sort of untreated just ro like comb top. And then I started putting that through the hand card. So that would give me my two bobbins. And I made sure that I started at the same end so that I would end at the same end and then I would be able to loop them onto the distaves from the same end so that I would be starting spinning from the same end. And yes, I will probably rewind these singles just so that I sort of do everything from start to finish and minimize as many variables as possible so that the finished yarn, I have a really good idea of, of sort of, if I change one of those things in this step, how would that change the yarn in the future? So a little bit more um, kind of, a little bit methodical through this spin so that I have some things to reflect on at the end. So I'll keep you posted. Um, wonder about combo drafting from such a prep, dizzing two colors together. Absolutely. I was thinking that Rebecca, the whole time that I was pulling it off, I was like, I should have done this for the sweet Georgia spin. This is what I should have done. Um, it would have taken longer. It would have been slower. 
um, because of course the carding, like just throwing those three strips that I had for the carding of that combo spin through the drum carder was so fast. Um, but I think doing the hand pulled roving would have been, it would have created a really nice prep and it would have created, I think it would have created a really nice prep and it would have, the colors would have, um, it's almost like you're basically pre-drafting or pre-attenuating. So I think the colors would have kind of, it would have been more like a watercolor. Whereas with the carding, I did still end up, and I'll show you the fabric actually, I did still end up with areas where I had the colors, um, uh, I had a lot of colors coming through in one length with the carding because I only put it through once. So with the hand pulled roving, you'll have more blending. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this may make its way onto the wool circle. Absolutely. Yes, I would love to see us really explore this idea. I think it would be really fun. Okay, let's do some knitting because we are getting on in time. So I really wanted to talk about the Atun shawl, but then I was working on it this morning and I'm in the middle of a row. So I don't have much to share with you. Um, I haven't made much progress, even though I have been working on this, like I really have been working on this. And so what I wanted to um, say, talk to you guys about, or just have the, have you guys in chat sort of chime in is like, what do you do when you have a project? We were talking about this uh, last week in, uh, um, fiber prep group on Friday, Diane mentioned that she has a friend that she sort of has a six week timeline with projects. And if it's not done by six weeks, she knows she's done with it. And she either puts it away or she just frog, she just frogs it, she rips it out. And um, I was thinking about that because I've been working on this for a long time. I've been working on it since um, early August. I'm not done with it. I don't feel like I need to pull it out or rip it out or throw it out or anything like that. I'm certainly not wanting to throw it at the wall. I'm not, I'm not frustrated. It's just really, really slow. And I don't make a lot of progress on it. And as the rows get longer, um, and as there are more and more stitches, it gets slower and slower. I also have to be really careful when I'm knitting each stitch that I'm not splicing the yarn because it singles. So you can see that like you have to really like, you know, make sure that you're knitting off the needle and not through the stitch. Um, and I have to admit, like, I'm sort of like, okay, you know, what do you do with these longer term projects? Do you just keep them around all the time and carve out time to intentionally work on them? Um, this is the back. It's very pretty too. Um, do you, you know, make sure that you, um, have other projects going that you're as excited about so that you can kind of rotate through. Um, I, I want to know, cause obviously I did not get my attune shawl done for the end of the spin along knit along. I knew that I wouldn't with travel and with other things going on. I knew that I knew that I wouldn't, but yeah, what do you do? How do you kind of keep yourself going with some of these longer term knit projects? I also am really aware of the fact that I don't want to knit too, too much just in general. Um, be, just for the longevity of my hands. I can't sit there anymore and just knit, 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 knit. I just, those days are over. Um, my hands are awesome. They feel really good. I don't have any stiffness in them. They, they, they've been totally fine. Um, but if I sit there and knit, 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 and I don't take a lot of breaks, um, I start to have, have, you know, I can feel the tendonitis sort of, um, creeping back in. So yeah, what do you guys do? I really want to know. The other project that I have worked on is my Trinigan. So I'm going to bring this with us this weekend. We're going camping for our regular October. It's our last time getting the trailer out for the season. We always try to go on the long weekend in October. It's kind of the last time that we go. Um, we usually go to the pub one night and sort of treat the kids to sort of burgers and fries. We just try to have a lot of fun. Although I don't know if it's going to be open this year because of all of the fires in the region. They've just opened it back up again. The fact that they've opened the provincial park for camping and stuff. I was really surprised. I thought we would have to do something else or not go at all this year, but they've opened it. So we're going to go and see how it is, but I am going to pack this this weekend. It's my Trinigan by Andre Mowry. Um, it needs its collar 
and it needs the sleeves. So I'm actually, the only reason why I haven't done any of those things is because I needed to get needles um, from my needle stash. I needed a different size needles I didn't have in my bag at the time. And I need to seam the underarm. So you have to seam the underarm uh, because you pick up, you, you cast on stitches when you go to knit the fronts and I have to sew that up before I can do the arms and I just haven't had a chance. So that'll get done this weekend. I don't know how much progress I'll make because Nora wants me to work on her tank top out of the black leg UV reactive yarn. So I told her I would bring it and that I would work on it. I have started it. I'm not quite, I can't really show it to you because I'm right in the middle of, I've got multiple sections on the needles and it's all twisted up but I'll share it with you next show and it'll probably be almost done if not finished because I promised her I would do it for her by Halloween so I've got like 30 days to get it done <laughs> um but anyway so those two projects are going to come with us just so that I can get some some momentum going on both of them I love what you guys were saying about um some of your stuff um Dion says um, that she won't put stuff away where she can't see it. I really like that. We've talked about that on the podcast before. Kay Facet always says that. Leave it out somewhere where you can see it, where you see it regularly. Um, Rebecca said, my tune had its day in the sun on vacation, but it's been slow since. I think I'll work on it as a reward when I'm done cer a certain number of hexes. So she's been working on a hexy blanket on the wool circle. Um, if you're not sure what she's talking about, the project is unbelievable it is so cool so um uh definitely check that out um lisa says i love brioche but it's fiddly and it is slow absolutely it is so slow christine says rotation and an uh, it'll get done mindset otherwise i start to resent the project that's very interesting that we start to kind of feel the burden of these projects over time i think that's really um uh yeah, it, 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 it shows you how much how much nuance there is in our projects, you know, that we cast something on, we're all excited about it, but there's kind of all of these emotions that go with it as we as we go on. Elizabeth says, for me, since I, um, I start spinning something fun that's colorful and spinning small samples, I happen to find a sparkly bat that coordinates with my attune and this makes me excited to get to the border. That's awesome, Elizabeth. I'm glad to hear that. Christine says also to be honest about whether or not you like or will wear it, what you're making or if it becomes a principal thing. I think that's very intuitive as well, Christine, that sometimes we just finish stuff because it's the principle of finishing it. It's not so much that we're really in love with the actual thing anymore. Um, I've really had to start to recognize that I don't want to have as many products that I would rather be working on something for longer and just enjoy the process. And so that's why I'm actually okay with the attune taking longer. It just means there's less to show you guys each week. But on the other hand, we can talk about other stuff. There's always other things going on and that's okay. Look how long the show is today. It's crazy. The other thing that I actually did make progress on and it, it's actually only because it was in my bag and it was at my fingertips and I kind of knit too far. So now I have to figure out what to do because I might actually have to tink back a little bit and rip back, but is my weekender. So I have actually finished the body. It's all crinkled from being in my bag. You can see, going back to what we were talking about earlier about the carding though, you can see that there were some sections in the carding where you know I spun the that magenta e color for a while. And then there's sections where it was really only just the green that was coming through. So you can see that the carding doesn't result necessarily from, from combining all those colorways in a really, really homogenous um, yarn. And yet from a distance, like when I'm wearing this and when it's on, it's, it's, it's gonna be great. Um, but there is a little bit of striping, there is a little bit of nuance, but this is the wrong side. So I'm showing you the stockinette side. This is actually the right side and a lot of that disappears. So the, you're knitting the sweater inside out with the Weekender. This particular version is the Weekender Light. Let me pop this through so I can really show you guys. I'm, I'm in love with this fabric. I just, I just love it. Um, if it's not your cup of tea and it's not your thing, that's totally fine, but I love this. Um, and I really like the uh, slipped stitch that goes up the center. I think it's just really fun. Um, although it does untwist the yarn a little bit like I noticed that the I guess when I knit I take a little bit of twist out because <coughs> I noticed that my it's quite loose the um the yarn the uh the slipped stitch 
Um, it's not really super tight, tight, tight. Um, so I've started the front, but I knit, like I said, I knit past where I was supposed to go. So you divide for your stitches for the front and then you do the back. And I've gone a little bit too far, so I need to decide what I'm gonna do. I might just leave it. Um, it's only an inch, it's not that big a deal. Um, so it'll be a little bit looser, a little bit more ease. I'll compensate in the back um, and knit a little bit further on the back. So we'll see, but that's, that's the weekender and it, it is coming along. And I'm just now finishing the first skein of yarn. So I have three skeins of yarn. I had a total of 1600 yards of yarn and uh, I just, just finished the very first one. And that was all of this knitting, all that yarn. So I have to wind another ball to take with us this weekend. Although I don't know that I'll work on this because I really need to work on Nora's mock neck tank. <laughs> so again, that's okay because I'm not in a rush to finish this stuff. I'm not in a rush for Trinigan. I'm not in a rush for the weekender. Um, I'm happy to work on them for as long as, as long as, I need to. I did size down with my needles with Weekender Light. I'm doing the pattern calls for 3.5 millimeters, but I'm knitting it on three millimeters just for slightly tighter fabric. Um, and I'm really glad that I did that. Uh, my gauge was a little bit too big on the 3.5 millimeter needles anyways. So I went down to the three millimeter. It's made an, a really nice fine fabric. So it's been good. Yeah. All right. Let's what time is it? Oh my gosh, it is so late. Okay. Um, I think we're gonna, I think we'll say, no, let's just do it. Let's do it. Um, I love what Rebecca said. I, I had a kind of stressful dream about finding a bunch of deep stash yarn in the attic of my old car college dorm. <laughs> That's when you know that you're making, it is taking up a huge amount of space in your brain. All right, let's get into all the stuff that you guys have shared over the last number of weeks. This is going back a while. So here is a whole bunch of the finished attune shawls that you guys shared. This is from Mary Jo. I love it. It's large and squishy and so warm. I'm ready for the snow and the below zero temperatures. I spun this on my supported spindles and plied it on my Frank Fell spinning wheel. Beautiful Mary Jo. All support spindle spun. This is from Laura. Beautiful photo, Laura. Here is mine made with hand spun from Nest Fiber and Laura won one of the prizes. And the cream is commercial yarn. I did 23 pattern repeats and 16 border repeats before binding off. It's incredible. It's plenty big and it's so warm. It's beautiful, Laura. Really well done. I'm dreading the garter stitch border. <laughs> I know that's terrible, but I am. This is from da uh, Dania. I really enjoyed this knit. So easy to follow and customize. And my hand spun is so soft and created a warm, lightweight fabric. It's beautiful, Dania. Is it Dania? Dania? Um, uh, and welcome to the community as well. This is from Mary. Here's my attune. Two of the three yarns are hand spun. The peach vermilion yarn is hip strings boy blend and is lovely to knit with. The details of the shawl can be found by clicking through the image. And that's on her Ravelry Projects page, but beautiful work, Mary. This is from Brittany. Gorgeous colors, Brittany. I love what you chose. Those are totally my aesthetic. And this, I'm pretty sure this is all hand spun or the white is maybe commercial, but the um, contrast color is definitely hand spun. This is from Christine. My tune shawl spun, knit, washed, blocked, and ends snipped off. It's currently lying in on the back of my sofa waiting for cooler weather and reading time to coincide. Amazing, Christine. Sounds like a wonderful date. A good book and a beautiful shawl. This is from Simone. She also won one of the prizes. Finished my attune shawl, but after washing and blocking it, truly is the, that is truly the end of this wonderful journey. And she shared a ton of photos on the Ravelry thread and in her Ravelry projects page, so you can see sort of the evolution of her shawl. Beautiful spinning. It's 100% hand spun and uh, really, really well done, Simone. It's warm and cozy. Thank you for such a great journey. 
All right, Year of Color Progress. There is some stuff that people have been doing for Year of Color. This is from Simone, and I will see if I can play this for you guys. This is so much fun. Until the recent podcast, I hadn't heard the word capstone before, so it got me thinking, and I'm kind of in the middle of one. A lot of you will remember me starting off with doing Rolex with six colors. This is more of a learning challenge to spin fiber to spin finer and I decided to do this spin to knit the Tetris pullover. Amazing Simone, that sounds fantastic. This is some general makes and shares from the community that you guys have been doing and this is from Sam. I love this so much. I have actually finished and love my finished sweater. I have worn it for a bit. So this was, um, I showed you guys last show the, the yarn and the fiber that she was sampling. And this is actually the finished pullover now that she's done. She knits like the wind, this gal. And I love this photo. Sam, you look so happy. Uh, we'll definitely make another one of these jumpers, maybe one a bit lo uh, with longer sleeves and a longer body. It uh, just grew once I got it started. So happy. And it's the Ironwork Tea by Diana Walla. Amazing. Beautiful, Sam. This is from Diana. This is really fun. I almost threw this into Year of Color, um, but then I threw it here. So there you go. She made a three, two, three ply yarn from two sets of singles, an orange and a red Corydale spun long draw, um, once, and then one set of singles spun short forward from BFL Silk. The second photo is washed and ready to be knit into a sample. And what I loved about this, we had this whole conversation this morning in Virtual Spin Group about marled yarns and how we don't really like them in the skein, but we love them knit up. This is very similar to the yarn that I won um, at with the book at Knit City last weekend. It's got that lovely marling and um, there's so much potential. And there are some awesome sweaters out there that have been designed specifically for marled yarn. So definitely give it a try and see what you think in the finished fabric because I think these we haven't really explored these in the community and I think they have a lot of potential. This is from Lisa. She now binded Andy a bed hat. His little bald head gets cold at night, so he asked me for a woolly hat he can wear to bed, so leftover yarn from the stash. So much fun. And it's fun to feature something um, that's not knitting. It's null binded, which is really cool. Null binding. There's um, accents that are supposed to be on the on the eyes, um, so it said null binding. We did a workshop at Guild a few years ago. I didn't attend, but there was, there's was there been null binding work, workshops. Um, and Lisa worked on this in some of the virtual groups. I was trying to figure out like the decreases and how they all work and yeah, very cool, very cool. This is from Dana. This just makes me so happy because you know spindles um, and support spindles are life. I've been working on these spindles since summer and I filled these six. It was eye-opening to learn how much I could get spun when I leave them by where I like to sit. The fiber is a cross of Merino BFL and CVM, a delight to spin, and the color is everything. I agree, Dana. Uh, her, our aesthetic is very similar. I was so surprised to calculate my yardage, 710 yards weighing a little over five ounces. Amazing, that's the beauty of air in that support spindle spun yarn. It's incredible, Dana, well done. This is from Mary, isn't this incredible? Um, the newest finish, Fini um, is a pullover for me. This one is all hand spun knit in one piece with five steak panels. Lots of Shetland and silk and various other yarns in here, including a blend of flax and another with a touch of bamboo. Just yummy yarns and beautiful colors. Well done, Mary. This is from Laura. So I had talked about these little bowls in a previous show and people were wondering what they were. And so um, I'd sent a couple of people had asked for links to actual photos of Straddle Creek spins uh, pillows with the spinning bowls attached to them. And then Laura posted a photo that she'd actually made one. So I thought this was brilliant. Um, haven't done anything with my woven bits and pieces forever, but now I have a perfect project for a, le for a leftover piece that was probably, that has probably been some sort of swatch I've made to test a Banny wrap pattern many years ago. Beautiful, and what a great use, pillow, pillow bowl for my support spindles. I don't know what else you would call it, a pillow bowl. I thought that was great. And she's got a Mirkwood sitting there. That's a Mirkwood uh, support spindle. Beautiful, gorgeous spinning, Laura. 
And this is from Dion. I had to share this. She just posted this this morning. This is the mock neck tank. And she was on a beautiful sunrise walk this on the beach this morning. They're currently in Portugal and she's wearing her mini mock neck tank. And this is what I'm knitting for Nora, what I finished off in the summer. And Tessa was wearing it Knit City. Well done, Dion. You look absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing all you do, you guys. And thank you for um, participating in the conversation, for making it richer. And uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much, you guys. I think that's it for today. The show has gone on long enough. <laughs> <laughs> there's that saying the show must go on the show cannot continue to go on <laughs> I need a break um, my I'm gonna start losing my voice here pretty pretty shortly so I hope you have a wonderful couple of weeks we will see those of you who are part of the wool circle back here same time next Tuesday uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific. I hope to see you here. If you are curious about the Wool Circle and you want to know about it and you want to attend, there is an option on Patreon for a free seven-day trial and then you can watch some of the previous episodes, come to the live stream, see if it's a good fit for you. We would love to have you. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and to the show. It really helps the show to get out there and be seen. It really does help. So I appreciate all of you taking a moment to do that. Until next time, have a wonderful couple of weeks. I will see you here on October 17th for the regular live stream. Until then, happy spinning, happy knitting. Bye, everyone.